Landlocked at the Horn of Africa, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia is a multi-ethnic state with over 80 different ethnic groups and home to about 113.5 million inhabitants. The nation is a founding member of the UN, the Group of 24, the Non-Aligned Movement, the Group 77, and the Organization of African Unity. Its capital, Addis Ababa, is the headquarters of the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the African Standby Force, the African Union, and many global non-governmental organizations. Regarded as a developing country and an emerging power, it has the fastest economic growth in sub-Saharan countries due to foreign direct investment in expanding agricultural and manufacturing industries. Nonetheless, as far as per capita income and the Human Development Index are concerned, Ethiopia has a high rate of poverty, poor respect for human rights, and a low literacy rate of below 49%, with agriculture accounting for 36% of the nation's gross domestic product. Ethiopia's economy is indeed faced with a number of serious structural problems, so there is a need for its stakeholders to focus on some vital steps for the growth of the country's economy, like investment in public infrastructure, among others. In the following ways, therefore, the Ethiopian government alongside its citizens on a journey to a rich economy. Diversification of the economy. Laying on a foundation to achieve the country's aim of middle-income country status by 2025, the Ethiopian government is currently promoting the structural transformation of the economy by facilitating the shift of workers from low to high productivity activities, including processed agricultural products and light manufacturing. There is the current increase in its links to global value chains and expansion in its industrial sector, which currently represents a significant percentage of its GDP, by exporting textile and leather products, and diversifying into new products from European markets. At both active and global levels, the Ethiopian government has been proactive in promoting green growth and so, its 2011 Climate Resilient Green Economy Strategy has set out a comprehensive approach to solving the impacts of climate change on the country's development. The nation is focused on reducing carbon emissions in agriculture by improving crop and livestock production, protecting and re-establishing forests, promoting renewable energy generation, and leapfrogging to modern and energy-efficient technologies in infrastructure development. Compared to other countries in East Africa, Ethiopia's private sector investment is still low, while its financial sector is relatively underdeveloped, with the most vital sectors remaining under government ownership. Nevertheless, considering the country's competitive production cost, which includes labor, much more will be contributed by the private sector in future. Improving access to water and sanitation So far, considerable progress has been made in improving access to water and sanitation facilities in Ethiopia. With the implementation of an ambitious, universal access plan by the government, which seeks to provide 98.5% of the population access to safe water, determined efforts have resulted to an increase in the proportion of the population with access to improved water sources. Dealing with challenges from variable rainfall and recurrent drought, the Ethiopian government is trying to increase its rate of investment in this sector in order to maintain progress. Following the Universal Access Plan, which adopted the challenging target to access better sanitation facilities for 100% of the Ethiopian population, hygiene promotion efforts have been made to promote better sanitation in the country. So far, the proportion of the population with access to improved sanitation facilities has increased over the years since 2005. Alongside greater access to clean water, a huge improvement is being made as far as health of the population is concerned and so, there is more ability to work and contribute to the economic growth of the country. This is Think Rich Africa, the number one community which provides entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. With a strong belief that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's development, we present to you our special African development playlist, so subscribe and stop missing out. With other government projects like the restructuring of the power sector, which has created two companies for generation and transmission, allowing for distribution, 
there has been dramatic benefits for the population as 53.5% now enjoy access to electricity compared to the 16% of previous years. It is therefore evident that renewable energy is a key driver of growth and poverty reduction in Ethiopia. Energy as a DRIVER of Girardotia by enabling the start of businesses and more access to health and education services, access to electricity indeed transforms lives. Ethiopia has abundance of hydro resources, and although all of its electricity comes from it, much more are still untapped. Nonetheless, the generation capacity in Ethiopia has tripled over the years and much more, is about to be gotten as the Ethiopian government is currently constructing the largest hydropower plant in Africa, the Grand Renaissance Dam, with an installed capacity of 6,000 megawatts for both national and international use. The government is also promoting and modernizing the institutional and regulatory framework. With all these crucial efforts, the government is aimed at facilitating the uptake of ICT across the country and introducing competition to the ICT sector. Impressive PR GRES at ND Social Sector From 56.6 years to 63 years, Ethiopia's life expectancy has exceeded the average life expectancy of 58.2 years in the low-income countries of Sub-Saharan Africa. In reducing the prevalence of infectious diseases such as malaria, there has been success through the widespread use of insecticide-treated mosquito nets and treatment for tuberculosis. So far, the infant mortality rate of the country has fallen from 77 to 59 per 100 live births. There has also been a steady decline in maternal mortality from 871 to 676 deaths per 100,000 live births. Nonetheless, maternal health in Ethiopia lags behind that of other countries, neonatal mortality is at a constant level and so, despite the improvements, infants and mothers are dying. The Ethiopian government is also closely working with regional authorities to enhance the quality of education by targeting support to teaching and learning. Devoting 28% of public expenditure to the education sector, the Ethiopian government has achieved development in the coverage and quality of services. And so, net enrollment in primary education has increased from 75% of all children in 2005 to close to 90% currently while primary school completion rate has risen from 34% to 52% within the same period. A huge portion of the Ethiopian population are under 30 years of age, and so there is a high level of unemployment in the country, as the youths are uneducated and unskilled. With lack of education being the main barrier to securing jobs and livelihoods, the Ethiopian government is increasingly establishing technical and vocational training and creating competent and cell-reliant citizens from higher education. From these efforts, technological abilities that will contribute to the country's economic and social development will be transferred and so, investments in trainings will ultimately contribute to the improvement of Ethiopian livelihood and reduction in poverty. Boosting ICT Development Over the last few years, Ethiopia has seen a major expansion in information and communication technology ICT. Nevertheless, as compared to other countries, the use of mobile phones and the internet is not yet common in Ethiopia. Only about 25% of its inhabitants are internet users, compared to the higher percentages in other countries. Recognizing the transformative potential of ICT as a gateway to the financial system, the Ethiopian government is increasing its rate of investments in the sector through establishments like the 200-hectare Ethio ICT village, which is attracting major interest from communication companies. Ensuring food security for all With growing population, land fragmentation, low yields, poor seed production and cereal deficit, food security has been a critical problem in Ethiopia. Multiple Ethiopian smallholder farmers are vulnerable to changing rainfall patterns and land degradation, exacerbated by climate change. This results to scarcity of food and high cereal prices, which in turn leads to the widespread of hunger and malnutrition in affected areas. Nonetheless, some important achievements are recently being made to reduce hunger and malnourishment in Ethiopia. Giving equal weight to malnourishment 
the proportion of underweight children and child mortality, the Global Hunger Index of Ethiopia has dropped over the years. There has also been a decline in the number of stunted children and overweight children over the years. Despite all these changes, millions of Ethiopians are still dependent on emergency food aid and so, the Ethiopian government is currently modernizing and investing in the agricultural sector, developing the road network to allow better access to inputs and food aid, and improving access to water and irrigation. These key elements, when tackled, will end the continuous food insecurity in Ethiopia. Reinforcing Transparency and Fighting Corruption Introducing a new legislation in 2008, Ethiopian citizens, as a means of tackling concerns about a lack of transparency, were given the right to access expenditure plans and budget data for the country, published on government websites. Also in progress to tackle corruption, the nation is performing better than the average low-income sub-Saharan nation, as its corruption perception score has improved over the years. With the establishment of a commission to take action on the prevention and investigation of corruption practices, petty corruption across government institutions has been checked. The Ethiopian government is, in turn, promoting economic opportunity and human development for the growth of its country's economy in the nearest future. By generating reliable statistics that help improve the policy-making process and the dialogue with civil society, the number of agricultural, business, and household surveys have increased over the years, and to promote transparency, the microdata from the surveys are made available to the public. With these impressive growth rates, Ethiopia has achieved some outstanding successes in recent years and so, its government is certain that extremely high rates of investment in infrastructure and public services will decline the rate of unemployment and poverty in the nearest future. To all Ethiopians, keep contributing to the growth of your nation, for it is of great importance to you and your future generation. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe and become a member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich AFRK. Thanks for watching and see you in another interesting video.